Hi, I'm Lee Star, and you're here today to watch things all about Phi 3. We've got some amazing demos from Pamela Fox from our Python advocacy team and Bruno Campolo from our .NET team. So learn all about Phi 3, how to build amazing applications, services, and tooling with small language models. Hi, everyone. I'm Lee Stott, and we're here today to talk about Phi 3 and small language models. As Microsoft and part of Open at Microsoft, we've launched the Phi 3 cookbook. Phi 3 is a really amazing product. It's a small language model, and we have four different models available. We have mini, vision, small, and medium. Today, we're going to go into a bit of detail around each of those and the different tooling and platforms that you can use with it. It's really great because it's available on the Azure AI catalog. It's also available on Hugging Face, and we've got loads of different ways of accessing this from a tooling perspective. So things like the Onyx runtime, to optimize the actual performance of the model. We have access via NVIDIA NIM. We've got access via Olama, which we'll talk a lot more about because we've built this into our cookbook. And then things like LM Studio and really new cool tooling services like VS Code AI Toolkit. So what is Phi3 and why should you be really interested in the opportunity of Phi3? Phi3 is a small language model. Small language models are gonna be huge in the future. So this is why we want you to really get to grips with what small language models are, what foundational language models are. It's got a super small footprint. This is what's really great about it. And it runs on CPU and GPU. So you can actually do this on your device. You can do this on devices like iPhones and Android devices as well. It's really small, so the latency is amazing. So again, think about those embedded devices that sit at the edge, so like smart TVs, audio and visual entertainment systems in vehicles. This is where these, la these small language models are gonna be really impressive. Again, it's really easy to use. So you know you can get massive business value out of this from fine tuning and building specific models for your specific use cases, which could be on your edge hardware, mobile devices, or applications and services. Again, think about those edge deployments Everything today is internet connected. You know, I can talk to my car and say, hey, Google, tell me the direct address of this place. Once we start to bring more intelligence to these systems and all cars now are starting to get vision enablement, so traffic signals, lights, pedestrians, this is where small language models are gonna have a huge, huge advantage. And then finally, it's really about the ease and affordability to be able to customize and fine tune and enhance these models. So I'm here today, I've got Pamela, and I've got Bruno from the .NET and Python teams. And we're going to be going to some demos about how to actually use this and use a cookbook and some of the amazing samples that we built. So let's go over to Pamela and talk about what we've been doing around these technologies. All right. So I'm going to actually show the cookbook. You can share this. Yeah. So here we go. Here's the cookbook. It's a GitHub repo. And so to get started, you can actually go ahead and create a GitHub code space for the cookbook. And that will create basically this de you know, developer environment inside your browser. And it's actually running in a container on GitHub Cloud. And we customize it so it actually brings in the Olama feature. So Olama is a great way to get started using small language models anywhere. And I actually even also have it running on my Mac itself. You can see my little llama in the corner there, but we can also bring it into our code spaces, which is really, really cool. Uh, and uh, you know, we do need a decent amount of memory. So currently we need at least 16 gigs. Uh, and so that's what we have in this code space that's now set up here. Uh, so once I've got this opened, then I can go to, uh, you know, our, our setup guide here. So in the cookbook, we've got lots and lots of guides. So there's tutorials, there's tons of Python notebooks, there's even, you know, C sharp code, which Bruno will show. Um, but, you know, just going through this guide here, right, the first thing we could try doing is making sure that we can run the Phi 3 model from Olama. So this will bring down the model if we don't have it yet, and then let us send messages to it, right? So uh, write a funny joke about someone named Lee. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a really crazy question now, Pablo. So, you know, yeah. what we've done here is we've literally just gone to the Phi 3 cookbook. This better be a good joke. <laughs> um, yeah. 
<laughs> we've gone to the five three code book, and all we've done is literally just loaded that code space. So code space is is very much like a, a Docker container within the cloud, isn't it? That's the easiest way of saying it. And again, yeah. this is completely free to utilize because it's sitting on a Microsoft repo. So again, if you do have a code space account, this is isn't going to go on your code space subscription or your sixty hours of billing because it's something that we're providing. And as Pamela says, you know, we're using the Olama model. Reasons are Olama is a super small installation model. It's very easy to use. It's, it's based from a, 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 a based from a code based interface. So again, you can interact with your models via terminal or via notebook. Mm -hmm. Again, this model supports Python in, in the implementation, but Bruno has also added an extension to support .NET as well. So this is a, an environment that you can just utilize to get started with these resources and get used to it without having that access to a machine or power the machine with 16 gig of memory. Mm -hmm. That's right, that's right. Because we really want to make it accessible to anyone. Um, so you got a GitHub account and you can do this. So then you can also say like interact with it from Python. Uh, I'm going to use the OpenAI client to do that just because uh, we can do that when we're using Olama. It's compatible with the OpenAI SDK. We just have to point it at the local Llama server that's running inside this code space. Uh, and then we can, you know, send it, send it requests here. Uh, I didn't think it was very good with the jokes about, about. No, I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> I, definitely bring my, I definitely bring my pants to the pill. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so here, you know, it's very good with, uh, with cues, um, you know, and so you can just start experimenting and, and you can go through this notebook yourself. You can try prompt engineering. You can try doing few shot examples. Uh, you can even do a little retrieval augmented generation. This one definitely takes the longest because it's it's the longest response and it takes time for token generation. But you can do all this yourself. Anyone can get started in doing it. So uh, yeah, so definitely you know get started and check it out. So if Python is language, this is for you. There's also lots of notebooks. And let's actually go over to Bruno now to see some .NET. Yeah, sure. So quick one here. We have a couple of definitions here. This is the main uh, repo, and we have a couple of definitions of how you can create your workspace, your code space. So here in code spaces, when you create a new one, if you go with new with options, you will see here that we have the default one that is going to be used, the one that, that Pamela showed. And then if you want to do C Sharp, this is the one that had 5.3 with C Sharp. Once you do this, and remember, you can test this literally in a couple of minutes. It took two minutes or something like this. This is what you have. A full, amazing environment, all web, ready to do some C-sharp with Olama. And the code is literally the same. We have some several samples to do a simple query, like the one that we see here, using semantic kernel, where we create an open AI chat completion, then pointing to the local host here, the, using the 5.3 model. We don't need the API key, but this is a, it's a mandatory parameter, so we need to do something there. And at the end, of course, sorry about that, I also do jokes about kittens, and this is what we have. And if we do a .NET run, sorry about that, but we are going to have a super bad joke about kittens. But hey, this is all local here. And as I said, we have another samples. We have, I like to do this literally with Visual Studio Code in my machine, connecting to the code space. So here this is literally the full Visual Studio Code experience locally with the code space running there. And this is the second sample, which is a chat. And it's kind of a, it's kind of a slow chat because, hi, I don't know, my name is Bruno. It's kind of a slow chat because remember we are not using a lot of a lot of resources here, but once again, using semantic kernel, creating a chat completion, and doing an eternal loop with questions and answers. And at some moment here, we are going to see how we get the result from the local one. But hey, this is amazing. We have more samples here. There it is. Hello there, just made your digital whatever, Bruno Bruno. There are so many things that we can test here in the fight. In the, in the cookbook. And the final is, hey, take a look at the other samples because we have, oh, somewhere here in the in the new one. We have samples to do uh, chat, to do basic stuff. We have all local rag and more. I love it. And hey, testing for free is always something that I'm going to be really yeah. happy to do though. Thanks, Bruno. Yeah, you know, the key thing is, is we built the cookbook and the cookbook is open source. This is one of the key things why we're on Open at Microsoft. Buy three is open source as well. We want this to be the one-stop shop where people who want to know about Phi three go to. 
So it's aimed at content from level zero. You know, you know nothing about technology and we have the step-by-step -step guides to get you started with the code spaces environment, local Docker containers, if you want that resource, which Bruno just shared there excellently. And again, you know, it goes all the way up to level 400. So if you want to do like massive fine tuning experimentation with large scale compute on five vision, there is resources there as well. Again, we really want you as the community to utilize this resource. This is advertised on both the Hugging Face repos and on the model cards. It's on the Azure AI catalog model cards. And we want contributions from you. We want to see some of the amazing samples that you're building around those different areas of where FI can be utilized. Again, you know, we want to see examples from students, pro developers, hobbyists, and even manufacturers, you know. So we're here to, to really work in collaboration with you, the community, showcase what you've done, and then hopefully do amazing demos like what we just saw quickly, better jokes than Pamela's, by the way, but one of the really cool demos. <laughs> so, you know, the key things from us is, is really, Phi 3 is a small language model. Any small language model is basically less than anything below 5 billion parameters. And this is an open source repo. So we are looking for you to do uh, contributions, sharing of your best practice, and hopefully we'd love to showcase some of the outcomes and projects that you're working on. <laughs>